happen <laughs> is that we have these beautiful self-healing mechanisms where every day we make cancer cells and we fight cancer. We know that. Every day, right now, we're all getting exposed to bacteria and viruses and fungi, and our bodies, our immune systems are fighting these off. We make proteins that break. You know, we have this oxidative stress that David was just talking about, and our bodies have natural anti-aging mechanisms. But all of these things get turned off when the nervous system is in what Walter Cannon at Harvard called the fight or flight response or the stress response. This is the sympathetic nervous system, right? When, when the body thinks it's in danger and it triggers a whole hormonal cascade that deactivates these self-healing mechanisms. And we are in stress response on average as Americans 50 times per day. So every time we're in stress response, these self-healing mechanisms are turned off. So what the researchers were telling me, well, fortunately, the body has its natural counterbalancing homeostatic state called the parasympathetic nervous system, or what Herbert Benson at Harvard called the relaxation response. He wrote a great book about it in the 70s. And when the body is in relaxation response, then all of these mechanisms get flipped on. So. This is great, the body knows how to do this, right? But the problem is we live in a culture where we have a cultural worldview that makes us stressed. And the problem is we don't really understand. This is what I started learning from my patients. We don't really understand what stress is in this culture. We've almost glorified it. It's like I'm stressed, I wear it as a badge of honor. That means I'm a busy, valuable person. I've got lots on my to-do list and God damn it, I get it done. Right? But what I was learning from these researchers is that people in the placebo arms of these clinical trials, they go into these clinical trials and they're stressed about their disease. They're in stress response and they're having physical symptoms and they go into these clinical trials and just the act of signing up for the clinical trial starts to relax them into the relaxation response because they're like, now I'm here with experts and they've got me and I'm, I'm signing up for the latest and greatest new treatment so I can relax now. And whether they're getting the new treatment or a sugar pill or a saline injection, they're likely to, at least a percentage of them are gonna start to get better. And just as an aside, one sugar pill isn't nearly as good as three sugar pills. <laughs> and an injection works better than a pill. And fake surgery is even more effective. So Bruce Mosley was this famous uh, orthopedic surgeon. He was doing all the knee surgeries for these famous sports stars. And he was really proud of his surgery. He's like, this is the surgery that works. So he wanted to prove it. And so he designed a brilliant study where he said, I'm going to prove that this surgery is better than just going in and taking a look. So he designed a study, and these people were awake. So he had to be very elaborate. Everybody was, because it was arthroscopic surgery. So the, the study patients were either getting his famous surgery or a fake knee surgery. So the people getting a fake knee surgery were awake watching a monitor filming somebody else's surgery while Dr. Mosley is down on the other side of the blue screen shooting water around and making noise and everything so that it sounds like they're getting real surgery. And he obviously knew who was getting the surgery and who wasn't, but the patient didn't. So what he found is that both arms of the patient had exactly the same outcome two years later. Now, in the short run, I think it was about the three-month mark, the people who got the fake surgery actually were doing better, probably because they didn't have the trauma of his fancy surgery. And the part that I find challenging is that his conclusion was, this doesn't work. Right? They did the same thing with mammary artery ligation. They used to go in and, and break open your chest if you had angina and go in and take the artery that runs on the inside of the rib cage, the mammary artery, and they would tie it off. And the theory was if there's no blood flow going through the, in, the ma internal mammary artery, then that blood can be shunted to the heart and it'll help with coronary artery disease and people will get less chest pain. So they did it and 80% of the time people had less chest pain until somebody decided to do a placebo arm and crack people's chest open and not ligate the artery. And 80% of the people got better. 
So it's now a surgery that's just part of medical history. Anyway, the idea that people are getting better from the placebo effect because of a combination of positive belief and nurturing care, putting them into the relaxation response so that something internal can start to activate was really exciting to me. And I started thinking about stress in our culture, about stress responses and what activates it. And based on what my patients were teaching me, I came up with a few different definitions that I wanted to share with you. <laughs> 